Animal First Aid, Lesson 1, First Aid Kit, presented by Maureen Ring, 4-H Animal Science Educator with Cornell Cooperative Extension of St. Lawrence County and 4-H. Please remember that at-home first aid does not replace professional veterinary care. If a pet is injured, sick, or has ingested something suspicious, please contact a veterinarian immediately. First aid care may help to save a pet's life, but often requires additional veterinary treatment. Important. Remember to never give a pet any medications such as Tylenol, Advil, Aspirin, or even Pepto-Bismol without checking with a veterinarian first. Many human medications are toxic to animals and can interfere with some of the medications that a vet might use to help a sick pet. One important thing is to be prepared. Make sure to have the following numbers handy, such as on the fridge or saved into a cell phone, as well as located in a first aid kit. Numbers that you should have should include your veterinarian, an emergency veterinarian, and the poison helpline. How to approach an injured animal. The most important thing to remember when approaching an injured animal is to remain safe. If a person becomes injured, they will not be able to assist in stabilizing a pet. When helping an injured animal, make sure they are properly restrained or fitted with a muzzle, unless they are choking. When an animal is scared or injured, they are more likely to bite. Please watch this video on the next slide on how to properly restrain your pet. Thank you for joining Carly and I in today's presentation of how to properly restrain your pet for any first aid treatment. One of the things we need to remember is that a pet that may be injured or in pain may bite. So we need to keep ourselves protected so that we can actually help them in times of need. So one of the ways we can restrain our dog is by using a dog muzzle. Um, these you can buy at most pet stores or vet's offices. And this is just a standard one. It's a like a nylon type one. You have some mesh ones, you have the hard plastic kind. Um, but having this kind is really nice because they fold up, they're easy to keep in a first aid kit. So to apply a muzzle, what you want to do is you want to be sure that your straps are already undone and you will just simply slip this over the dog's muzzle. You're going to come up behind the ears and you will clip it and then what you need to do is be sure that you cinch down on the clips so that it's secure so the dog can't easily remove it from their face. Um, now if you don't have a muzzle like this at home, that's fine. You can always use what you have around you, and in making a first aid kit, one of the things you'll have in there is some gauze. I like to sometimes keep some that are already pre-cut, so I have a quick grab muzzle. Um, you can use the gauze by either making a loop, if you like, placing that over your pet's muzzle, kind of like we did with the nylon muzzle, tightening and bringing it again under and behind the ears. Um, one of the things too is keeping your ties to the bottom, like so, will be less interfering in the dog's eyes. Okay, So that's one way we can do it. Now if we don't have any gauze handy and we need something really quick, your pet's leash can also serve as a muzzle. What you would do, again, the same thing as we did with our gauze, you can just place it around their muzzle. Sometimes you can do this a couple of times, making sure again you end with the straps underneath. I'm just crossing them here and then I'm coming up and behind her ears. So that's how you can safely restrain your dog before performing any first aid treatments on them. How to properly restrain our cats. Here I have um, my, my cat kitty here, Minx and he's going to show us how we can safely wrap a cat so that we don't have to worry about being bit or clawed. So one of the ways
ways we can do that is by using just a standard blanket or towel and you want to sort of make a swaddle like you would a baby so you will bring your blanket up from behind and then what you will do is you want to be sure to bring your sides in and one of the important things when we are swaddling or wrapping our cats is to make sure and I'm going to turn him around here so we can see is we want to be sure that their head it's nice and snug around their head area so this way here they can't easily get their claws out and scratch at us this though keep in mind you're not able to do a full exam on your cat but at least if you need to do any treatments around the face you can and also this is a good tip if ever you have any medications you might need to apply to your cat for example any ear drops or eye drops or even oral medication um, it just stops the cat from being able to get away or use their claws so this way here it frees it up so that I can apply my ointment into their ears or I can then open up the eye apply any ointments into the eye the cat is nestled up against me so the cat can't back up and I'm more protected this way and I keep all my fingers what to do in an emergency situation first keep calm and assess the scene you want to check for any additional threats to you or your pet. This is important for everyone's safety. Next, keep the animal warm, except in the case of heat stroke, and also keep them quiet as possible. Keep movements to a minimum, especially if there is possible trauma, broken limbs, or any neurological symptoms. You will then want to contact your veterinary hospital inform them of the situation, and get specific first aid advice. To safely move or transport an injured pet, have somebody to help you. For a small dog or cat, you can place them into their carrier. Remember, do not push an injured animal through the small door or opening. Simply remove the top for easy and safe access to the carrier. For larger dogs, Use a makeshift stretcher made out of some rigid material. You may also use a blanket or coat as another means of transporting the animal. Then, get to a veterinary hospital as soon as possible. Make your own animal first aid kit. Having a pet first aid kit handy is a good idea. Make sure all of the items you put into your first aid kit are specifically geared towards pets. So adhesive bandages that are made specifically for pets won't stick to their fur like regular adhesive bandages for humans. Include important paperwork such as vaccination records and a first aid manual for pets. Have the number of your veterinarian and an emergency vet hospital handy, as well as poison control center or hotline. Include a current photo of your pet and be sure to keep your first aid kit updated, dispose and replace of any expired products. Common items found in an animal first aid kit. Gauze for wrapping wounds or muzzling the injured animal. Non-stick bandages, towels, or strips of clean cloth to control bleeding or protect wounds. Adhesive tape for securing the gauze wrap or bandages on the pet. Hydrogen peroxide, 3%, to induce vomiting. You must always contact your veterinarian or local poison control center before induced vomiting or treating an animal for poison. A digital thermometer and petroleum jelly to check your pet's temperature. Do not insert a thermometer in your pet's mouth. The temperature must be taken rectally. And remember to lubricate the thermometer with petroleum jelly before inserting. Eyedropper or large syringe without a needle to give oral treatments or flush wounds. A muzzle to prevent being bitten. If your pet is vomiting, remember, do not muzzle it. And a leash to transport your pet. This is if your pet is capable of walking without further injury. If you have any questions about this presentation, 
Contact Maureen Ring, 4-H Animal Science Educator at Cornell Cooperative Extension of St. Lawrence County.